DJ's take. Asking questions, getting answers, DJ's take. It's not a bunch of mindless banter, DJ's take. Take a break from everything. Yeah, what you wanna talk about, the options never end. Are you into conspiracy? Are you an alien? Guys having girlfriend problems, girls in trouble with your man. As he said, this is TJ's Take, episode 14, Wrestling. So, um, yeah, I love wrestling no matter what it is, whether it's real or fake. Um, and as I say real or fake, I'm talking about like, uh, what up Brandy, what up Omar, what up Brittany? Um, I'm talking about like, uh, real wrestling, like high school wrestling or like, uh, Little kids wrestling, um, college wrestling, collegiate wrestling. Um, I love that. You know, I, I wrestled for uh, three years, basically two. Wrestled varsity my senior year. Wasn't too good. But, uh, you know, I started out, uh, the coaches had to teach me how to, what up, Tom? Uh, the coaches had to teach me how to wrestle from like a sit down position because uh, I push a walker for balance. So uh, they had to teach me how to like shoot in at people's legs and stuff. And uh, there for the first year or so, they wouldn't teach me anything because I don't think they really knew how. So uh, yeah, I wrestled my junior year. I wrestled in one JV tournament and. Uh, then I wrestled my uh, senior year, and I wrestled in a couple of varsity tournaments and varsity, and wrestled some guys that placed at state and all that good stuff. I, you know, I don't want to say I sucked, but uh, I was actually getting the hang of it. You know, my senior year, uh, getting the hang of everything. You know, actually scoring points and becoming within like a point or two of winning. Then I got mono and had to quit. Uh, so, yeah, that sucks. But, uh, yeah, I liked it. Um, if, you had to, uh, if you had to say, did I like it a lot? Uh, I don't know, you know, it's probably, it was probably about the only sport I could actually do. So, you know, it's, um, it is what it is, you know. So, excuse me, guys. But, uh, what up, Rachel? Um, yeah, so... I mean, I loved it. I grew up in a little town called Oskaloosa, and uh, I'm sure you all know that You've, if you watch my uh, TJ Stakes or whatever, but yeah, go Indians, man. But uh, I liked wrestling. It was fun. Yeah, you know, when you grow up with a minor disability or whatever, you, you just kind of want to be part of a team, and I just wanted to be part of a team, and I was really strong in my upper body, and I still am, you know, I... Uh, but, uh, yeah, I wrestled, and, uh, then there's my other passion, wrestling, like WWE, WCW, TNA, uh, Ring of Honor, um, all, all wrestling, and, and most people would call it, uh, fake wrestling, I would call it sports entertainment, it's kind of like a man's soap opera, really, if you think about it, but, uh, it's cool, I mean, you know, my, my mom, uh, Took me to an event, my mom and dad and my sister, we went to a WWE, like a Raw, back when Hogan was around, Zeus showed up, uh, Macho Man, pretty much all the legends, Big Boss Man, Ravishing Recruit, Ultimate Warrior, you know, and from there I was hooked, I mean I was hooked ever since, uh, I used to have to get these surgeries at the Shriners Hospital in Chicago, and uh, my parents would have to leave, like, for, <laughs> my parents would have to leave for multiple days on end, and they'd bring back, like, these rubber wrestlers that were, like, probably, I don't know, probably, I don't know, they are just really big, and they were hard rubber, 
and I had tons of them, you know, so every time I'd have a surgery, my mom would go pick up some more, you know, and that, and that, that had me hooked, you know, from probably the age of like six, five, six years old, I've watched wrestling and continue to watch it to this day. You know, it's funny, wrestling, wrestling, you can, uh, what up, Tina? Um... What up, Keith? What up, Deborah? With wrestling, with uh, sports entertainment, you can shut it off, not turn it on again for like five years, and you can figure out what's going on. I mean, you might be like, oh, this this stinks compared to the way it used to be, but uh, it's good. You know, I mean, uh, if you've ever watched it before, you can pretty much pick right back up where you left off is what I'm saying. But, I mean, everyone's got their favorites, you know. I mean, I think people that don't even watch uh, res wrestling, like fake wrestling like that, they say, oh, I hate that stuff. But then, like, if John Cena or The Rock come on TV, especially girls, you know, they're like, oh, I hate that garbage. And then John Cena or The Rock will come on TV or, like, uh, Roman Reigns, and they're like, oh... He's so hot, you know, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a thing where it's like, I don't know, you know, girls watch soap operas or soapies is what they want to call them, but, uh, guys, we don't really do that, but we kind of do, you know, if, if you watch any kind of WWE or any kind of old WWE or WCW or TNA or ECW or Ring of Honor or Lucha Underground, you know, any of those, you know, I, I love wrestling so much that I got a freaking wrestling sleeve, you know, I got freaking The Rock, Undertaker back there, Ric Flair, Stone Cold, I mean, I got tons of them, you know, so... It affected me so much that I actually got tattooed permanently because I love wrestling so much. You know? I I don't know. I, I think I could think of... Uh, yeah, Triple H. I, I, Brittany, I don't really have uh, Triple H. I, he wasn't one of my favorites. I do have The Undertaker on the back of my arm. Like the old Druid Undertaker like in the 2000s or like maybe late 90s. But... Uh, He's got, he's like holding up a, holding up his hand and he's like in front of a coffin and he's got like candles behind the coffin and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's so funny. I, I could, uh, I could think of stories that just about around like wrestling matches, you know, it's like, what was I doing in my life when this happened? Like if you go on like the WWE Network and you're like, oh, I'm going to search through there and find a match. I can usually think of things that I was doing in my life, like when that match was going on, or like the time period that that match was going on. That's, you know, certain people have their thing, like hobbies, and I think that, I don't know if you'd call mine a hobby or an obsession, but yeah. I mean, I, I just love WWE or any any kind of wrestling. It's not just WWE. I like TNA, Ring of Honor, um, Lucha Underground. What up, Andy? Um, all different kinds of sports entertainment, you know. And and I mean, it teaches own. Not everybody likes it. It's not. It's not. Some people think it's not the most entertaining thing in the world, but. Some people don't even think that uh, football is the most entertaining thing in the world. So, you know, it's, um, like I said, it is what it is. But, yeah, I mean, um, you know, they even used to have cartoons on TV called, uh, like, uh, All-Star Wrestlers or something. It had, like, Hillbilly Jim, The Junkyard Dog. Uh, King Kong Bundy, Hogan, uh, Coco Beware, I think was on there, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, like I said, there's people out there that don't like wrestling, like my buddy Andy Fry just said, woo, wrestling, I mean, he's one of those people that don't like it at all, and I make it a purpose to go over to his house and talk about it, just because he hates it, so, 
you know, it's a good conversation starter. Be like, oh, you hate it, so why do you hate it? You know, and ask them a whole bunch of detailed questions. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, like I said, we all have our our favorite uh, favorite uh, favorite things to do. I don't know just why it's dark. Uh, I'm using my uh, iPad this time, so it might be a little bit more dark. Haha, <laughs> fry. It's all right, buddy. What up, Bobby? Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to use my iPad this time, so it might be a little darker. I'm sorry about that if it is. I don't have the, uh, I don't have like a uh, professional setup here. You know, if I did, I may, I may fade out from darkness to my face, like during my theme song or whatever. But uh, yeah, I don't have any of that professional stuff, so I'm just kind of doing a, a TJ's take and. Uh, if you can't see me that well, oh well. I mean, tons of you have told me to shave, so, you know, it really doesn't matter if uh, you see me that well or not, so, apparently, uh, you don't like, uh, don't, uh, like the, uh, hair on my face or something, you know? It's okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going for the caveman look, so, you know, I'm single now, so I figure maybe if I grow a bunch of facial hair and caveman look, I'll probably still be single, so... You know? No, it's all good. But, uh, yeah. When when ladies give you the comments of, oh, shave your face, shave your face, it's like, mm hmm. Then I shave my face, and everybody's like, where'd the facial hair go? So, you know? I probably will. I thought about it before I did this video, but, nah. It's all good. I'm not trying to impress anybody, so, whatever. Well, I mean, porn stash. Come on, Andy. You don't like that, buddy. That's that's one of my favorite parts. I mean, that's that's the thing that grows the best. It almost connects to everything. So, I mean, even if I do get the Ron Jeremy stash going on, dog. I mean, it is what it is. And for you people that don't know Ron Jeremy, I don't know if I'd Google him. You miss my face. <laughs> so what? I don't care. Thank you, Brittany, for saying accomplished. Lucas Burmeister, what's up, dude? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm sure everyone has their stories, even if... Yeah, man, this gets darker like as the second goes on, don't it? But uh, yeah, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you all have your stories. And I'm sure even people that haven't watched wrestling have a story about wrestling, like the sports entertainment side of wrestling, or even a story about like high school or collegiate wrestling or something like that, you know? So, I mean, it is what it is, you know? I go get tattooed every summer, you know? Oh, well, I've been tattooed my whole life, really, but uh started when I was 16, but I used to go out to the shop, Marion, Illinois, Jack and Becky Morton. What's up, guys? Hope hope they're still kicking butt, and I know they are. So, uh, shout out to you guys. Uh, you know, I did a I did a I did a uh, did a uh, TJ's take a couple weeks ago, and I mentioned businesses, and I forgot to mention those two: Jack and Becky Morton, Unique Inc., Marion, Illinois. You guys ever make it out that way over by St. Louis, about two hours away? Hit them guys up. Uh, go see their shop, Marion, Illinois. Good tattoo artist. Love you guys. Um, but yeah, um, I get tattooed every summer where I was going with that uh, uh, up in Waterloo, Iowa. And we, I go in there and there are tons of wrestling fans, you know, like my tattoo artist Alex. He's a wrestling fan and, and it's, it's, uh, basically everybody in there is wrestling fans. Well, not everybody, but probably. Awesome, Brittany. Yeah, I'm sure you have some stories about that. Guys get pretty... Get pretty involved when they when they watch that stuff. So, I mean, come on, maybe your uh, stepdad or your siblings gave you the Macho Man elbow drop off the couch. But yeah, we. Uh, my point to all that is, every time I go in there to get tattooed, we do like uh, wrestling trivia, and we sit there and watch like old wrestling matches and like talk about things that could go on in wrestling, you know. And uh, I mean, there's at least four or five guys in there that like wrestling a lot, so. You know, Alex included, and then uh, Chris and Ryan. I mean, I know, there's a guy in there that actually is uh, trying to be a wrestler. Like, he's going to the, 
he's doing the whole, um, I don't know if you'd call it the minor leagues of wrestling, but, uh, yeah, he's good, so, check him out, his, uh, his, his wrestling name is Johnny Ruckus, he's pretty good, so, uh, but yeah, we, we go in, we go in there and I'll talk about wrestling, and we'll sit there and BS about wrestling and have trivia about wrestling, and sometimes those guys will even, um, I don't know, break out the Xbox and play, uh, 2K, 2K17, 2K18, they have characters created and stuff. You know, it's just crazy how sports entertainment, something minor like that, can bring a bunch of people together, you know? So, I mean, it's way cool, you know? Like I said, I, I, I stamp my body for life with that stuff, so, you know, it's a, it's pretty awesome, you know? Um... Yeah, I, and then, you know, I go to a party last summer, and and our, that wrestler was there, and I let him Ric Flair chop my chest, you know, and yeah, it left, like, some welts on my chest, and I was supposed to get tattooed the very next day, or a couple of days later, I couldn't get tattooed on my chest, because I let that guy Ric Flair chop me, like, six times, but it happens, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to say... Hey, I got Ric Flair chopped by a guy that's training to be a, a wrestler, and he could go places, you know? I mean, he's good. He, I guess he went out to Ohio and was trying to be with that crew and came back for a little bit. I don't know the details, but, I, I mean, I wish him the best. And if I ever see him on TV, it's like, hey, man, I got Ric Flair chopped by that dude. So, you know, and I got Ric Flair chopped by my buddy's uh, girlfriend. So, you know, it's all good. So, stupid things we do when we start to party. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, just tons of stories, like I said, you know. Um, but yeah, my reasoning, like everybody says, oh, what's your reasoning to get tattoos? Hey man, I get tattoos because of stories, because of... Uh, Things that happened in my life that I want to remember and want to talk about. So, yeah. This will probably be the last time I use the iPad. Because this thing is like really, really super dark for some reason. But, uh, yeah. My dog's over here licking everything, so, um, you know, it's even crazy, you can think of, like, theme music, I mean, if I said, if I said to somebody who doesn't watch wrestling very much, what is Hulk Hogan's theme music, I bet probably 20% would, yeah, yeah, thanks, Brittany. That's true, I mean, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like I was saying, if I if I chose, uh, if I said, hey, Hulk Hogan's theme music, you know, does anybody know it? If you don't watch wrestling, I bet 15, 25% would say, I am a real American, fight for the right of every man, and then do the, do the whole, yeah, so, you know, do, do the whole, uh, so, yeah, I mean, exclu excluding my friend Andy Fry because he knows nothing about wrestling or nothing about sports in general. So, I mean, it shouldn't even fall under, it shouldn't even fall under, um, he hates wrestling. He basically just hates sports, period. You know, I mean, he'll watch the Hawkeyes every once in a while, but it's not... It's not a wrestling thing for him, I don't think. It's like, oh, I just hate sports, period. And it basically is called sports entertainment. So you just wipe out the entertainment part, and he just hates it. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah. I mean, we all know the theme music to some of, some people, you know. What up, Ryan? How you doing, man? I mean, I think we all, growing up as a kid, we had our... Uh, you don't preferably like sports. I mean, you, you're you okay with freaking uh, football, but uh, what else do you watch? I mean, every time there's like a big sporting event on TV, you're like, oh, it's another sporting event that everyone's watching. 
So, yeah, I would I would particularly say you're not a huge fan of sports, but um, maybe my opinion's wrong. That's why it's called DJ's Take, buddy. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know the theme song about everybody, you know? So, you know, it's funny because they have this little game called Song Pop on Facebook, or... I don't think it's just on Facebook. It's like on the App Store or whatever, and uh, it has a uh, has a um, category called wrestling, and it's just like tons of theme music to like different wrestlers and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty fun. But um, I usually beat people at that, is what I'm saying. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and then there's some iconic, like, sports entertainment figures that everybody's gonna know. I mean, even if they don't watch it, they're gonna know who they are. Like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, everybody knows who that is. He's one of the coolest actors of all time so far. Um, Hulk Hogan, obviously. Um, Zeus, everybody knows him. He was in the Friday movies, like, Next Friday and, uh, whatever those movies are called. The Hardy Boys, yeah, yeah, Brittany, they're good. I mean, I don't know if everybody that doesn't watch wrestling knows who the Hardy Boys are, but yeah, Matt and Jeff Hardy are cool. Uh, the the whole gimmick that they got Matt Hardy doing right now, it's called Broken Matt Hardy or Woken Matt Hardy. It was called Broken Matt Hardy in TNA. Uh, that it's pretty cool. I mean, I always used to think Matt was kind of a kind of lacked behind Jeff. You know, I was like, oh, Jeff's the cool one of the Hardy Boys because he's just crazy and paints his face and stuff. But this new gimmick they got going on with uh, Matt Hardy, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. What up, Abby? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think some of them need to wash it up, like The Undertaker. I met him at, uh, I met him at Comic-Con this year in Oklahoma City. Guy's getting pretty old. I mean, 56 years old. Even to take some bumps and bruises, I mean, eh. That'd be like saying, let's go to, let's go to the Olympics at 56 years old and, and take some, uh, take some bumps. So, I don't know. You know, it's funny, I want to go back to my childhood about real wrestling, like, like high school wrestling. When I first got in high school wrestling, I thought it was like WWE wrestling. I thought, oh, elbow drop somebody in there, down and out, and you can pin them. You know, I don't know it's if you ever if you have kids or or putting someone through wrestling and you think it's like sports entertainment, like the fake wrestling, don't do that because it's way harder. It's way harder. So, but I mean, yeah, it's 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 fun to think, oh. You could get on something, dive off and give them the Swanton Bomb. And they're pinned. No. What up, Brian DeWitt? What up, Crystal? How you guys doing? Um, this is TJ Steak, episode 14. Um, wrestling. Real and fake. So, I mean, if any, if any of y'all have any stories about real wrestling or fake wrestling, or real wrestling or sports entertainment... Hey, hit, hit me up and uh, let me know what your uh, what your favorite part of it is, you know. So, and yes, I am very hairy, and yes, it doesn't look that great, but I love it. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, so uh, fun. Another funny thing is my mom, my mother used to hate. I wouldn't say hate wrestling, but she would rather do away with it, you know, like the, not like real wrestling, like Matt wrestling she liked, you know, she would cheer for me and all that good jazz, but like fake wrestling, WWE, <laughs> we went to a Monday Night Raw and she went with us and uh, she thought it was one of the coolest things she'd ever seen, you know, like live, if you think this stuff's boring on TV, go to it live once, because it's, it's really cool live. Like it, like uh, it's just as good, if not better, than any of the best concerts you've ever been to. So, yeah. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think if if you're really into sports entertainment, 
you have your favorites, which everyone does, I think. One of my all-time favorites is CM Punk, Edge, Stone Cold, Ric Flair, Hogan. Uh, the next live event in Oklahoma City, I think, is next weekend or the weekend after. What up, Ariel? Brittany, that, that goes out to you. I think it's uh, it's just Road to WrestleMania, but it's not like a taped event, so it's not like Raw or SmackDown. But yeah, I, I would say uh, Raw or SmackDown would be cool to go to. SmackDown's got some pretty cool people, and uh, Monday Night Raw has uh, pretty legit people now. Ronda Rousey just signed with the WWE. And she body slammed Triple H a couple weeks ago through a table on Raw, so pretty neat. I mean, it'd be cool to go see Rousey. Rousey whips some butt. She's not very great on the mic, but uh, she she whips some butt, you know. And she comes out with like a like a Rowdy Ronda shirt on, like a Rowdy Roddy Piper. So it's pretty cool. Same music that she came out to UFC. Um, Joan Jett. So yeah. That, I think, is the next live event, and then WrestleMania, which is in uh, New Orleans this year, so, what up, Brenda? But yeah, um, I I don't know, I mean, if you were talking about uh, TNA or, like, uh, NXT, which is, like, WWE's, like, minor leagues, which, pretty good stuff, uh, Ring of Honor or Lucha Underground, I don't know when, uh, I don't know when, uh, that comes around, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I watch every single one of them, that's why I keep saying that, so, what up, Tony, what up, Trevor, how you guys doing, um, but, yeah, oh, yeah, I, I think real wrestling, like, mat wrestling, I would have liked to start as a kid, because I, I think I would have been pretty good if I would have figured out, nah, well, just use your arms as much as you can and try to do moves where you don't have to use your legs as much. So, I think I would have started to whip butt because I started to figure it out about the middle or end of my senior year. And it was too late. I, I got mono and um, started to started like cough up blood and stuff. It was crazy. But, uh, yeah. But I think if I would have started it as a kid, I don't know where I would have went with it, you know? Uh, a wrestler called Cheeseburger, yeah, he's a Ring of Honor wrestler, actually. He's a little guy. Only weighs like 155 pounds, 165 pounds, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I've seen him wrestle. He's pretty good, actually, for being as little as he is. So, Cheeseburger, yeah, he wrestles New Japan, and he wrestles... Uh, Ring of Honor Wrestling, so. Yes, Brenda, I do know who Cheeseburger is. And I know the other type of Cheeseburger since it's right around lunchtime. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> Sonic Cheeseburger sounds really good right now, so. He's, he's your favorite. Awesome, awesome. Awesome, Brenda. You like Ring of Honor then, huh? Something that comes on like Sunday nights. Bless you, Loki. Bless you again, buddy. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Brenda, if you like uh, Cheeseburger, you'd like guys like, you'd like, guys like uh, Daniel Bryan. The Yes movement. The Yes, Yes, Yes. And for people that are fans of wrestling, and uh, Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson. Oh, Rock On. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I know, I know a lot of... I know a lot of people that are like that, Brenda, that it just comes on regular TV, so they watch it, and they're like, that's pretty cool, you know? Ring of Honor's got some pretty cool people, you know? It's got, uh, it's got the Briscoes, which I think are one of the best tag teams in the world. Watch those guys, they're from, like, uh, uh, they, they're like Jay Briscoe and Mark Briscoe. Check those guys out on Ring of Honor next time you watch it, they're pretty good, um, Dalton Castle is like this flamboyant champion that they have. Um, Jay Lethal is one of the best wrestlers in the world, in my opinion. Um, they got this guy named Truth Martinez, which is like really big, like six foot eight, six foot nine. He's like really agile. So 
and and also and they got Cody Rhodes from WWE who calls himself the American Nightmare now. So they're actually moving up in the world, but I mean they've actually always been pretty top level, top shelf. I mean CM Punk went there, Seth Rollins was there, uh, Cesaro was there, Samoa Joe was there, AJ Styles was there. Pretty much every WWE wrestler you can think of started out around there somewhere. So. <laughs> I don't know what your whole run message is. <laughs> yeah, they do have uh, knee and knee and elbow br brace commercials during Ring of Honor to try to try to pump the uh, pump the advertisements. Oh, if you're old over the age of sixty five, you can call this number and get a free knee brace. <laughs> it's it's totally great. It's like oh oh, what a way to promote knee braces. You're watching sports entertainment. Let's promote a knee brace. So. Yeah, I totally get that. Uh, Seth Rollins, I mentioned, he's he's new school, but he used to be in Ring of Honor. Then he was an NXT champion in both, and then he came to. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. To pause my pause, what I was saying, Brenda. To answer your question, she says they they got to use it because they know it know it. Because they use it, people know it works. Well, yeah, you got Jay Lethal, their former champion, which is one of the best wrestlers in the world. Uh, he wears a knee brace, and he does one of those commercials. He's like, a knee brace like mine. You can you can qualify for a knee brace just like mine. It's like, yeah, okay. We know it works since uh, you're awesome and you're wearing it. But, yeah, uh, I... I Totally forgot which way I was going with the conversation, but uh, yeah, it's uh, Seth Rollins. Yeah, Seth Rollins. He's like new school. He came from uh, came from Ring of Honor, went to NXT, became a champion. Then he became part of the Shield. Then he stabbed his Shield was uh, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, which are all top guys in WWE now. But uh, Seth Rollins is from. Um, Buffalo, Iowa, which is Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and uh, the last, the last uh, time they were in Des Moines, he came out with a uh, Seth Rollins Iowa's own shirt and uh, went to order, and it was sold out. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool that he's he's from about from about an hour and a half away from where I'm from, you know, and he, he's just he's good for new school guys. He's good, and I mean. I I I won't I won't sit here and say that Reigns and and uh, and uh, Ambrose are not good. Reigns is good. He's supposedly WWE's new top guy. They're trying to like shove Cena out the door and make Roman Reigns the top guy. He's got the looks and he's got the personality. He needs the mic skills. They're getting better as the years go by. He did a promo with Cena uh, last summer that was pretty stellar. So. Um, Roddy Roddy Piper, uh, Brenda Selecta says she misses Roddy Roddy Piper. Yeah, I miss Roddy Roddy Piper. I liked his personality. Um, he was a trash talker, and, uh, I'm Irish. Uh, I got Irish blood in me, so I like the whole kill thing, even though it's like Scott, Scottish or whatever, you know, but that's just right by there, so. But, um, or like rivals or whatever you want to call it, but I still think the kill thing is awesome. But, uh. Yeah, he's pretty tight. Roddy Roddy Piper's cool, and uh, R Ronda Rousey is that's like who influenced her to be a wrestler before he died, I guess. And that's why she's wearing the Rowdy Ronda Rousey shirts that look like Piper's old shirts. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, Brenda, like I was saying earlier, you would like Daniel Bryan. If you don't know who he is, Brian Danielson, which is Daniel Bryan, got cleared by WWE doctors because he had a neck injury a couple years ago and they wouldn't clear him. He got cleared the other day, so I think you will see him at WrestleMania wrestle Shane McMahon. That's probably the way it's going to go. And if they don't give him that match, I think he will probably leave WWE 
and go wrestle for Ring of Honor and win the championship. So, that's my opinion. Maybe like a conspiracy opinion, but that's my opinion. <laughs> uh, I think it's cool when girls watch sports entertainment. And not even just sports entertainment, but like real wrestling, like Matt Wrestling. Like I got a buddy, a buddy's daughter, her last name's Utterback. She's like setting records in Iowa and like doing things. And she's a little girl, so I mean, that's cool, you know, I'm not trying to sound like chauvinist or whatever, but that's awesome, you know, because like, you don't see too many females go out for like collegiate and like uh, high school, well not high school, well like toddler wrestling and like high school and junior high and then junior high and high school and then go to college for wrestling, but this girl is like pinning everybody and like whipping people's butts and good for her man you know i always thought when i was in school there should be girls wrestling you know <laughs> that's cool Brittany. that's cool good for you uh yeah i think there should be girl wrestlers you know i when i was uh when i was a senior there was supposed to be a girl going out on the team and i knew her and they're like, hey, would you, would you beat her? Would you let her win? It's like, hey, man, it, it's a sport. And I mean, truthfully, I mean, let, let's, let's think about this logically. You know, let's think about this in a logical format. It's like I'm a high school kid, 17, going on 18 years old. This girl goes out for wrestling, and she's good looking. You know, and I'm not saying, say, I'm not trying to point out anybody or anything, but you know, if if a girl goes out on a wrestling team and she's good looking, I mean, some guys are perverts, man. So it's like some guys are going to let that girl pin him, you know, like, oh yeah, but then you're going to get to the guy's ego and he's going to try as hard as he can. Now, if she still pins him, good for her. I'm not saying a woman can't pin me, you know, I'll admit First woman ever to pin me to my to my shoulders was my mom. She did in like high heels one day. I was I was sitting there goofing around with some buddies, and we were in my room and and I lived in a like a Victorian style eighteen hundreds house that had like the dome windows and all hardwood floors and like the the uh, like uh, old style heaters and. Uh, I was, it was like my junior year, and I was sitting in my room BSing with my buddies. My mom walks in, and, what up, Scott? Uh, my mom walks in, and she's like, hey, I bet you think you're tough. I was like, yeah, I, I, I think so, you know, bragging around my buddies. She's like, I could pin you in this dress and high heels. I'm like, there's no way. She put me in an Olympic headlock, threw me on my back, and pinned me, and I couldn't move, so... Anyone that says woman can't beat a man, hey man, wrestling's all about technique, and it's not always about power, so it does work, and hey, I'm not afraid to admit I got my butt whipped by my mom, <laughs> I always got my butt whipped by my sister too, but you know, it's all good, they're a tough women, so I think a lot more girls per se should go out for wrestling. I mean, look at look at fake wrestling or sports entertainment. There's tons of girls now. Sorry, there's uh, tons of girls now that uh, wrestle, and it's like a woman's revolution or evolution or whatever they want to call it. You know, you got like Charlotte Flair, Oscar, freaking just tons of girls. And it's like Sasha Banks, you know, Bailey. Uh, Nia Jax, you know, you got girls that are just good with sports entertainment, and then you and then you add in the fact Ronda Rousey, a former two-time UFC champion, you know, she only lost two fights, you know, it's like, oh, everybody wants to bag on Rousey and be like, oh, she's no good, she's no good, it don't matter if she ain't no good, I mean, really, if you look at the facts, she wasn't bad. She got beat, but she's only been beat twice, and then she went to WWE and got paid large, so good for her, you know, it's it's not a thing of, oh, you're horrible at UFC, no, it's just people figured her out, that's what the deal was, she was 
like riding on a high horse because nobody could figure her out. And then girls just figured her out. And then she went away from the arm bar. She started talking, thinking she could knock people out. <laughs> started, yeah, I'll answer that in just a second, Brittany. She uh, started thinking she could knock people out. Her trainer was like, oh, you, you're one of the best punchers in the world. Come on, guys. Let's get real. <laughs> let's get real. Ronda Rousey made it in MMA because of an armbar. She was good at it. So any way you can hit that armbar, try it. You know? I don't care if you got to drag them down by their hair or drag them down by their their shorts or something or, you know, drag them down with a leg lock. Get that freaking armbar in there, you know? Don't be telling somebody who got there with an armbar, oh, you can punch with the best people in the world. Come on, dude. Get real. Evan Teresian or whatever the heck, Edmund Teresian or whatever the heck your name is. Garbage. But, uh... Yeah, Brittany, uh, back in the 90s, there was this girl named China. Um, China was, like, called the ninth wonder of the world. She was, like, Triple H's bodyguard. and <laughs> She was, like, a woman, but looked like a man. Uh, she quit wrestling and actually got into the pornographic industry, and I don't think she will ever be. She died last year or the year before. I don't know if she'll ever be part of the Hall of Fame just because she got into, like, the pornographic industry, you know? There's been some tragedies in, in wrestling. I mean, there, me and a buddy talked about this the other night. It's like uh, steroids, painkillers, sleeping pills. Um, it's got to mess with your life. I mean, those guys are on the road, like, 280 days a year or something like that, or 275 days a year. So pretty much every day, every day of the year, they're home for like a month, <laughs> or or for like two months or something, maybe three at the most. But it's like uh, you take all those pills and you can't sleep and you got to go from city to city every night. I don't know. Maybe it mess with your head. I know. I know. If you take a bunch of pills in general, it's gonna mess with your brain. I mean, look at Chris Benoit. He was a wrestler for WCW. And he was even part of the Horseman. The Horseman. But, uh... He... He killed his wife and kid. You know, he was supposed to be at a wrestling match. It was like... I don't know. Supposed to be at, like, some pay-per-view. And he supposedly was at home killing his wife and kid. So... You know, I was telling a kid the other, uh, I was telling a buddy of mine the other night. I was standing in Walmart line the day after Chris Benoit killed his wife and kid, and there was this guy holding a WWE. I think it was WWF at the time, maybe, or just crossed over to WWE. But he he was holding a magazine with Chris Benoit's face on it, and he's like, "I know Chris Benoit. He would never hurt or kill his wife and kid." Hi, Cindy. Um, and I had turned around, and I was kind of disgusted, I was like, really, you don't know that fool, I was like, come on, you know a guy he portrays on TV, it's just like an actor, you know, I was like, he probably is squirrel crap crazy, you know, I mean, seriously, he just probably is, you know, it's like, come on, taking steroids and painkillers and sleeping pills and paint, um, I mean, just... Anything to keep your body moving and uh, probably massages all the time. I mean, probably just make you go stir crazy and make you go nuts. So, obviously. Uh, I mean, they're not, not the only tragedies in, uh, in, in sports entertainment. I mean, pretty much if you look up WrestleMania number one, pretty much 75 to 85% of the wrestlers have died already. So... You know, and I think the average lifespan, I was reading some uh, some poll one day, and they said the average lifespan for a sports entertainer is like 60 years old, or like 55, 58 years old, or something like that. So, I don't know. It's pretty nuts. <laughs> yes. Ashley Hunter Hicks, what are you up to, lady? 
Ashley's one of those people that she ha- she gets stuck watching wrestling because her husband likes it, and now her son Gavin loves it. So she's probably one of those that doesn't really like it, but she's like, I'll watch it because they like it. Good for you, Ash. Good for you. Good for you, darling. Oh, yeah, I like the weird wrestlers. I, I like the uh, weird sports entertainers like uh, Ravishing Rick Rude. Uh, I mean, I they're not like my all-time favorites, but I mean, I, I like them. I think it's, they're pretty cool. Like, like nowadays, if I had to pick a weird wrestler that I like, it's probably Elias, Elias Sampson. He uh, acts like the Honky Tonk Man, and uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> make it entertaining? Well, you, you joined in as it's about over, but I'll try to make it entertaining. It's about WWE and WWF and, like, Matt Wrestling and stuff, so hopefully that's entertaining to you. But, yeah, Elias, who is my least favorite? Mm, let's think about that. Probably Kane. Probably probably the monster or the big red machine Kane. Garbage. In my opinion. It's like, ugh. He's good. He's got longevity. I mean, he's good in the Royal Rumble because he's big. But, I mean, probably just my least favorite. Maybe Sergeant Slaughter. I didn't like him. Yeah, yeah, whatever makes Gavin happy. Yes! Oh, yeah. That's what makes Gavin happy, right? Matt Hardy. Delete. 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 You hear that probably 50 times a day, Ash. So, yeah. Gavin's cool, though. Hey, man, I, I liked wrestling as a kid. And look how I turned out. So, it'll be all good. It will be all good. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, yeah, I actually am going to get my chest finished this year, this summer and put the Ultimate Warrior and Sting, like the old Sting, like Flat Top Blonde Sting, and then uh, Ultimate Warrior side by side. I was going to try to sneak a third wrestler in there, but I think I might just go two wrestlers on my chest. That'll be it. But, uh, yeah. But, uh... You know, if I had to judge what I liked more, I don't know why Ashley just gave me an angry face. Maybe because I did the Matt Hardy. She don't like the, she don't like the Matt Hardy. Yes, delete, delete. But um, yeah, Tiffany Anderson, what's up? How you doing? And and for those of you just joining in, this is TJ's Take, episode 14, wrestling, real or fake. You know, it's, it's uh, this is a topic I could probably talk about for a whole day. You know, just sit here and, like, talk about trivia of wrestling or sit here and talk about just anything that involves wrestling. But uh, I'm not going to bore you guys for that long, so. Just like the, on this, uh. On this channel, on my TV, they got like 24-hour wrestling, which I know on WWE Network they have that, but this is like a channel, and all it does is just run wrestling, and it's like TNA, and um, TNA Impact, and it, run, it runs it from like 2002 till now, so like 15, 16 years, so it's pretty cool, I guess. Um, yeah, see, I'm, I'm pretty smart. I'm pretty smart. Ashley, who would you say your favorite wrestler is? You gotta watch it all the time, even though you don't really like it. Who would you say, who would you say your favorite is? Like, favorite person to watch. And don't just tell me someone that you think is hot, like Roman Reigns, but, uh, who do you like, like, that has talent? And you can answer that as I'm talking about something else, I guess. But, um, yeah. <sighs> yeah. 
Excuse me, guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Finn Balor. Fervil Devitt. Yeah. Finn Balor's cool. The Cootie Gras. He's pretty cool. The Demon's even cooler, though. Finn Balor has a alter ego called the Demon. And it's pretty neat. He paints up his face like Hard Jeff Hardy used to. Um, yeah, that's cool, Ash. Thanks for your opinion. Uh, thank you, thank you. I bet, I bet Gavin does the cootie gras off the couch, doesn't he? Don't don't ever let him try that to Gavin, or don't ever try that. Let him try that to Jocelyn. So. <laughs> Might hurt. Uh, I don't know who's all watching this besides Ashley. I think one other person. But uh, who are who are your guys' favorite wrestlers or your least favorite wrestlers or sports entertainment entertainers or man soap opera actors, whatever you want to call them. You know, who are your favorites? Or least favorites. A lot of people like bad guys. Heather Thomas. What's up, girl? Um, yeah, it could be your least favorites, too. You know? I don't know. I was a fan of a lot of bad guys. So. Oh, we jumped up to four. So maybe they can tell me who their favorite or least favorite wrestlers are. Whoever just gave me thumbs up, thanks a lot. I couldn't see your little face, but... Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, cool. I can actually push that and see who's watching, huh? Hmm. Okay. I don't know how I get it back over to the deal. Sorry guys, I'm kind of trying to mess with this and I can't really figure it out. So, sorry about that. Oh, okay. Undertaker and Stone Cold. Okay, I see that now. Sorry about that. I was messing with it and I couldn't. Uh, what up, Ben and Mandy Edgington? How you doing? If you were a wrestling fan or are a wrestling fan, whether high school junior high or college wrestling or even fake wrestling like WWE this is your show um, The Undertaker's good, Stone Cold's good, Brittany I have them both on my arm actually, they're Stone Cold and The Undertaker's on the back of my arm which I can't show you right now but if I ever see you in person I'll show you and maybe I already have, I don't know I've hung out with you so but yeah it's always good Huh. Yep, Stone Cold was a lot of people's favorites. Stone Cold was was pretty good. Okay, sorry, Brittany. Sorry. I mean, I know we've hung out, but I can't remember if I showed you. So sorry that I uh, repeated myself. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, Stone Cold was a lot of people's favorites. He was good. He uh, pretty much changed the the Attitude Era. You know, he basically a guy that started out stunning Steve Austin in WCW. He was like this long-haired, blonde-haired dude, and then uh, then uh, he shaved his head and started drinking beer. And <laughs> just the baddest SOB around, I guess. What up, Josh? How you doing, man? Long time no hear from you. Hope you're doing good, man. This is a this is a podcast to or a video podcast to bring out your inner wrestler, bro. So, what you gonna do when TJ runs wild on you, brother? Yes. What up, dude? 
Hope everything's going good in your life, man. Miss you, buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, John Cena is like a modern day uh, Hulk Hogan. You know, it's like say your prayers and eat your vitamins. And uh, Hogan used to preach that when I was a kid, like in the 80s. He'd be like, say your prayers and eat your vitamins. He'd come out and tear off his shirt. I'd be like, that is so awesome. And then John Cena came along. And John Cena is like a modern day Hulk Hogan. I mean, honestly, in the record books, probably better than Hulk Hogan. But uh, as far as his uh, gimmick, it's pretty much the same. So he, I always tell my daughter, he, I liked a guy like John Cena when I was a kid, and that was Hulk Hogan. So. Yeah, Brittany. I don't know if she's hideous. I don't know if I'd call her hideous. I mean. I, I, what up, Heather? Undertaker and Stone Cold, huh? Another vote for those two, huh? That's cool. Taker's cool. I met Taker at Comic Con a couple months ago. So, he's pretty neat. Pretty nice guy. Pretty big. I mean, his hand basically went halfway up my arm when he shook my hand. What up, Craig? How you doing, dude? Heather, give that baby a kiss for me. He, he looks really cute. I want to come back there this summer and play with him. And tell Corey he should call me every once in a while. Or I'm going to come back there and give him the Macho Man elbow drop. Oh, yeah. You like that? If I had a Slim Jim, I'd snap it to a Slim Jim. But, uh, yes, yes, and yes. You know, it's it's crazy if I log in here like at noon or whatever, like lunchtime, and I do these videos, I don't have very many people watch them. But, uh, it don't matter. Like I said, I'm not on this to, to get rich or die trying. I'm just uh, out there to uh, shed my opinion. Share it. Care it. You'll be sure he watches this? Yeah, well, tell him that I, this guy right here, is still the legend. Still. Still. I know I passed it on, but see, I'm still the legend. So, uh, he needs to know that, and yes, I will snap it to a Slim Jim if he don't call me sometime. Or, you know, last summer I didn't get to see you guys, Heather, so tell Corey I better get to see you guys this summer. You know, you guys know I'm there every summer, so I better get to see you and hang out. And if I don't, I'm going to come find you. So, it's it's your job, Heather, to hook me up with some ladies this summer is what the deal is. Come on now. I mean, yeah, I'm scruffy now, so I don't look that great, but I could shave. And I, I still try to go work out like twice a week, so... I need to find me a good catch. <laughs> She's probably rolling her eyes right now like, ooh, oh God. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, oh, God. She just said, oh, God. She's like, oh, TJ hasn't changed at all. Ha, 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 ha. No, I'm just kidding. It's like it would, it would be cool, find, cool to find somebody, but on the other hand, maybe not. So, But, yeah, your little baby's cute. Heather, I mean, all your all your kiddos are cute, but he's cute. He looks like he would be fun to uh, get get all wound up. Shane Utterback, man, how you doing, buddy? I just talked about your daughter in this video or in this podcast. I said she's whipping some butt. I I'm very proud of of female females getting into wrestling like Matt wrestling and whipping some butt. And your daughter's one of those people, and good for her, man. I don't know her, but I'd like to give her a hug and a high five because that is cool. That's awesome to me. It's like it shouldn't matter if you're a girl. It shouldn't matter if you're a guy. It shouldn't matter if you're transgender. If you want to play a sport, go for it, man. You shouldn't put limitations on anything. If you're disabled, 
anything, man. They should, people should be able to adapt to whatever, you know. And good for her, man. I see her out there kicking butt. I mean, and you're, you loved wrestling, so that's awesome, man. I love it. Sorry to just blast you out right when you joined the video, buddy, but, uh, yeah. Um, a lot of you guys are probably at work, and yeah, I should be working too, but I kind of took a break to do this video and uh, eat some lunch. But uh, that's the freedom from working from home. You can pretty much do whatever you want. But yeah, Shane, if you're still watching, buddy, jump on here live and join my video and talk about maybe... Maybe uh, like a water record is or something like hit the hit the little camera thing at the bottom to join the live video. I'll accept. I mean, you may have to talk for like a couple minutes, but you could tell us like what your daughter's record is and and how and like some experiences you've had with taking her to like uh, different wrestling meets and stuff. If you want, if not, that's cool too. I'll keep talking for a little bit and then I'll probably jet off here, but. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. So we've had two votes for Stone Cold and The Undertaker as people's favorite wrestlers. You know, no Rock, no Cena, no Edge, no Andre the Giant, no Sting, no Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> no, I'm just throwing them out there. I don't really care. But, um, yeah, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Sometimes I struggle, like I've always told you guys, sometimes I struggle with stuff to talk about. This is something that I do not struggle talking about. I could talk about it for hours and hours and hours. People would get bored, but I could still do it. <laughs> yep, um... But anyway, it's been real and it's been fun, and I think I'm almost done. Look at that, I should be a poet, and I didn't even know it. Poet and didn't even know it. Hang on guys, okay, well, this has been TJ's Take. Episode 14, Wrestling. TJ's Take, asking questions, getting answers. TJ's Take, it's not a bunch of mindless banter. TJ's Take, take a break from everything. Yeah, what you want to talk about, the options never end. Are you into conspiracy? Are you an alien? Guys having girlfriend problems, girls in trouble with your man. Who we'll look no further? He's the man with the plan because it's TJ's take. Asking questions, getting answers. TJ's take. It's not a bunch of mindless banter. TJ's take. Take a break from everything. Stay tuned for TJ's take. You are watching TJ's take. Like I said, TJ Steak, episode 14, Wrestling. And yes, that is my theme song. And yes, that's Scott Miles doing my theme song. He's the man. The reason why I'm going to start doing the, the song at the beginning and at the end of every video, that way you guys remember Scott Miles' name. Scott Miles, check him out on Facebook. Go to scottmiles.com. He also goes by Scott Dammit. Uh, I went and watched him last night at Brewski's. He, or not Brewski's, but... Uh, uh, Lumpy's, he's there every Tuesday, he's at uh, Brewski's every Thursday, he's at Brewski's Thursday and Friday of this week, I may go watch him Thursday, but if you've never checked him out, check him out, because that's his voice on my uh, TJ's take, and he's the man, so go check him out, he's got t-shirts for sale, Scott Dammit, remember that, Scott Miles, aka Scott Dammit, awesome, but anyway, this has been TJ's take, episode 14, wrestling, love you guys. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.